Sadhguru, the, uh, but the great work done by all the senior cardiac surgeons, cardiologists, and all the good doctors of this country. Heart care has attained a lot of, it has got a lot of confidence from the people. It's very interesting, Sadhguru, when I started my career 25 years ago, I left England 25 years ago. I started in Calcutta. If I told a patient then... A lot of heartbreak there. <laughs> if I told a patient then that he needed an operation, it required more than an hour of convincing him for an operation. But today, I face a different problem. You're standing in a line. <laughs> <laughs> Today, Sadhguru, when I tell a patient, after seeing all the reports, that you do not need an operation, I have to spend one hour to convince him why he doesn't need operation. Everyone wants heart operation, Sadhguru. Is it for romantic reasons or...? <laughs> <laughs> how do we, how do we convince people that fixing the heart <laughs> is not like, you know, <laughs> y y y something wrong with your house, you get a plumber, he will fix it, or, you know, you something wrong with the car, you change the parts. It is something different. There are, the, the we are not the uh, magicians or we are not the gods, and the nature is the best healer. <laughs> and Cardiac surgery is only a fifty-year-old phenomenon. People have lived for. I think centuries. they have also realized it's a dumb pot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big dilemma for all of us, uh, uh, Sadhguru. Today, people want something to be done on their body all the time. Yes. <laughs> if not heart, many other parts. <laughs> Yes, uh, as I said, uh, probably in another fifty years, fifty percent of the population will be going through these surgeries, which is not health, which is medical industry, but not health. If health has to happen, a culture of health has to come in. Not healthcare systems, not hospitals, not more doctors, not more surgeries, but a culture of health has to evolve. Right now, the world is in a way of imitating everything that America does. They eat badly, they live badly, and they have a three trillion dollar bill of health care. It's sinking the country, okay? <laughs> it's sinking the whole nation, health care. We want to follow the same things. We want to dress like them, we want to eat like them, we want to live like them, and we want to get unhealthy like them, but our country cannot spend three million three trillion dollars on you for sure, we'll let you die. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we're not going to reach out to everybody and do surgery for 1.25 billion people. That's not going to happen in near future and if it doesn't happen, it's a disaster. If it happens, it's a bigger disaster. That people do not know how to live well is a disastrous way. That I would say seventy percent of the ailments on this planet can be just handled with better sense of living, eating, atmosphere, if you manage seventy percent will be gone. You can achieve this in twelve to fifteen years of time on the planet if a determined effort is made by the people, by the policy and by everybody concerned, particularly the hospitals, they can do a lot. Because when they're sick, they listen, you know <laughs> Otherwise they don't <laughs> When they're well, they don't listen. When they're sick, they will listen. They're, they have years, more years than two when they're sick. That's the time to talk to them <laughs> as to how to live better. These things are not new to us. These are very strongly rooted in our cultural milieu. But uh, we're throwing it away for something which will bring us a lot of trouble. For immediate attention, for immediate intervention, of course, medical intervention is uh, primary and it's most vital, there's no question about that. But long-term health will not happen because of medical sciences as we know it. Long-term health 
of a society or a nation or the planet will not happen that way. We have to bring a culture of health. What is the way to live? What is the way to eat? How to keep our body? How to keep our mind? How to keep our breath? How to keep the atmosphere around us? If this culture is not brought into us from our childhood, I would say it must be brought into the school curriculum itself. It must be brought in healthful ways of living because if you do not build healthy people, you're going to have educated and sick people and you're going to build a nation or a world out of it. With sick people, you're not going to build a great nation, you can only build a sick nation. Uh, and that is happening across the world. The major nations are suffering enormous amount of illnesses. The most affluent countries who have no nutritional problems, okay? India's half the problem are nutritional problems. Right from their childhood, they've not eaten properly. Affluent nations who have a choice of nourishment, look at the level of uh, uh, health issues they have. That should not exist at all. When they have choice of nourishment, they should not have, I would say, eighty percent of the people should not have any health issues till they die. When twenty percent, twenty-five percent will get something, infections will come because of close proximity, those are different. But these are all on self-help. People are on self-help to create ailments for themselves. This can be one hundred percent taken away if we establish a culture of health for which I think not just medical uh, professionals, people from various other areas have to work together to make this happen. I don't see any major synergy like that right now. Small efforts are happening here and there, but that's not enough. It's good, but it's not enough. Mm -hmm.